Hey, Brenner, if you jump off this cliff right now, I'll give you a penny. Oh. Hi, I'm Bryson, and a while ago I made a video about the times I almost died and the times I got hurt really bad. <clears throat> but that got me thinking about the other injuries in my family, and one sibling came to mind. One who had dodged the grasp of death more times than I can count. The sibling who had little to no regard for his own mortality and would regularly hurt himself. The wild child, if you will. The youngest brother, Brenner. This is gonna be a long video, because Brenner gets injured a lot. I don't want to cut out good stories or do a part two, so let's just sit down, relax, grab some popcorn, and laugh at my brother's pain. Now, almost all of Brenner's injuries were self-inflicted. However, I think it's only right we start the video with Brenner's very first injury, the one he got from me. Brenner had recently been born, and my parents invited me into their room to say hi to my new baby brother. As I said hello to him, he reached out his hand and scratched my chest. Now, obviously, Brenner was just a baby. He had no control of his body and was just moving around. But my four-year-old brain could not let this slide. How dare you? First you come into my house, take my spot as the cute youngest child, and take all the attention from my parents? And now this? I offered you my hand in friendship, and you attacked me. You must pay recompense for your actions. Hey, no, stop. Just calm down. Don't do it. My parents tried to stop me, but it was too late. I reached out and scratched him back. He began to cry, and my parents put me in timeout. Little did Brenner know, his pain had just begun. Okay, in all seriousness, I felt really bad for what I did. Even now, I still regularly apologize to Brenner about it. But he can't even remember it, so he doesn't care. Brenner, my conscience has really been getting to me lately, and I'm so sorry about what I did. Dude, that was 17 years ago. Can you just move on? I forgive you, okay? Thank you. I love you, Brenner. I'm so glad I could get that off my chest. Remember in my pain video where my brother Brody slammed the door on my fingers? Yeah. Apparently that experience runs in the family. Brody walked through a door as a young Brenner was sticking his fingers in the hinges and Brody slammed the door again. <laughs> Brenner's fingers bent every which way. If I had a nickel for every time I slammed a sibling's fingers in the door, I'd have two nickels. That isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Luckily, Brenner's fingers didn't break, and the doctors fixed him up. Feel better soon, buddy, and don't get into any more trouble. I will make no such promises. One time, me and Brenner were playing tag, and rather than be tagged by me, he jumped into a busy street and a car barely avoided him. I guess Brenner was more willing to die than lose at tag. Would you rather die a terrible death or- Definitely death. Wait, you didn't hear the other op- Death. I genuinely don't know why he is so accident prone, but this next story was no accident. You know how sometimes your mom has a really good friend so she decides to make you hang out with her friend's children, but you don't like them? Yeah. When I was younger, my mom sent me and Brenner to play with the neighbor kids, Jake and Steven. The main reason I didn't like Jake was because he said, Your sister is so hot. Brittany was 18. Jake and I were eight. Have you considered shutting up? Anyways, I spent the day tolerating Jake's shenanigans, but eventually I hid from him on the front porch and watched Brenner and Steven play in the front yard. Come here, Brenner, I want to show you something. Brenner walked up to him, Steven grabbed his hand, reached into his pocket, and pulled out a pair of scissors and started cutting Brenner's fingers. Stop! I ran over to them to check on Brenner. His fingers were bleeding and he was crying. I slapped the scissors out of Steven's hand, grabbed him by the arm, and forced him inside to his mom. Hey, Steven just cut Brenner's fingers with scissors. Hmm? <sighs> oh, Steven. What? That's it? I was shocked. Call my mom right now so she can pick us up. We're leaving. We left and Brenner's fingers healed just fine. But still, that reaction from the mom was not okay. Luckily, I never had to go to that family's house again. Reminds me of another time Brody was really young and another boy was punching him. My mom took the kid to his mom and told her that his son was hitting Brody. And all she did was say, uh, Soft hands, Hunter. I mean, come on, soft hands? How about punishing your kid for hitting a stranger? You clearly don't know how to discipline children. Here, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> A lot of Brenner's injuries were caused by him wanting to grow up fast and to keep up with his older brothers. For example... My turn! Br 
Bryson doesn't need training wheels on his bike, so neither do I. Let me try! But one time, Brenner tried to set a trend that the other brothers would follow, and the consequences were severe. This next story is the real reason I made this video. I'm honestly still surprised that Brenner survived this. It was bad. In our basement, we had a tall exercise machine that looked like this. Brenner decided that he wanted to climb it and jump off it onto our beanbag for fun. However, this time it went horribly wrong. Brenner pushed the beanbag close to the machine, climbed up, and jumped head first with the same regard for his life that a Minecraft player has when seeing one block of water at the bottom of a cliff. Part of the beanbag covered the exercise bench which extended out, hiding the big metal part underneath. Brenner thought that since there was part of the beanbag there, it would be soft, but his head slammed through the beanbag into the metal part and he split his forehead wide open. <laughs> Mom and Brittany came running into Brenner crying with blood all over him. They freaked out and dashed him out of the house to take him to the hospital. I only caught a glimpse of him as they ran out, but I could tell it was bad. Brittany and mom later told me that they could see Brenner's skull through the gash in his head. My dad sent me to a friend's house so they could watch me while my parents took care of Brenner. I remember sitting on their stairs, terrified that I'd never see Brenner again. God, please hear my prayer. If you make Brenner be okay, I promise I'll never be mean to him again. At the hospital, since Brenner was so accident prone, they kept pointing to cuts on his head that were from previous shenanigans. Is this cut old or new? Is this cut old or new? Is this old or new? Finally, my sister was like, This! The gaping gash on his forehead! That is new! Forget the rest of it! Fix that! Somehow, the doctors patched him up. I think they even had a plastic surgeon involved in fixing his head. When I next saw Brenner, he was up on his feet with 25 stitches in his head. But he was okay. Phew! I thought you were gonna die, Brenner. I'm so glad you're okay. Anyway. <laughs> Brenner still has a massive scar across his forehead, but thanks to the doctors, he was okay. Brenner, can you please calm down on the injuries? You're gonna die if you're not careful. It's not hard to die. I could do it like right now. But like, number two. <laughs> Another time, a young Brenner was using the bathroom and found a bottle of painkillers on the countertop. They were coated in a sugary glaze to make them go down easier. So Brenner took the pills one by one and sucked on them till they ran out of sugar, then spat them out. He did this over and over and over, and from sucking on the pills, he got sick and passed out. I'm a tired. Ooh. <gasps> My mom discovered Brenner unconscious on the bathroom floor surrounded by pills. And once again, the doctors proved why it's good to go to college. N not for me, though. But as for you guys, good for you. I don't know how they saved him, honestly. I don't really know how doctors work. For all I know, they could have removed all of Brenner's blood, which was tainted with drugs, thrown it away, then pumped him up with fresh blood. I don't know. Another time, he swallowed a bunch of coins, and again, my parents rushed him to the hospital where he was x-rayed to show a pile of coins in his stomach. They told my poor parents to dig through his, ahem, waist until they got all the coins. He was like a piggy bank, but way more disgusting. <coughs> he was like a piggy bank, but way more disgusting. Honestly, with how often Brenner visited the hospital, I'm surprised they didn't have a special section of the hospital just for him. This next story is surprisingly the only time that Brenner has ever broken a bone. You would think at this point that he would have no bones left because of how often he gets hurt, but nope, he still has bones. My family has a small motorcycle that we call Big Bertha. It's fun to ride around on, but it has no suspension. It is two wheels and a motor, that's it. One day, Brenner was driving it, and despite knowing that Big Bertha had no suspension, he decided to ride it off a curb. The bike bounced, Brenner swerved and lost control, and he went head over handlebars. He landed on his arm and totally snapped his wrist. One hospital trip later and Brenner had a cast. He wanted his cast to be unique, so he asked me to paint it to look like Thanos' gauntlet. So I got the paint out and painted it as best I could to look like the gauntlet. It looked pretty cool in my opinion. But then later, Brenner's arm got itchy. The doctors told him that his arm would be itchy at first, but that if he ignored it, the itchiness would go away. They also specifically told him to leave the cast alone and to not shove anything into the cast to try and scratch his itch. 
However, the itch got the better of Brenner. So without consulting anyone, he grabbed Brody's glasses and started shoving the long end into his cast in an attempt to scratch his itch. He pulled the glasses out only to realize that the little rubber covering had slipped off and it was now stuck in the cast. Determined to scratch his itch and recover the rubber cover, Brenner somehow removed all of the soft wrappings underneath the cast, leaving only the hard outer shell. Brenner had scratched his itch and was satisfied. Then mom walked in and saw what Brenner had done. They went back to the hospital and explained the situation. Can you imagine being a doctor and setting someone up with a nice cast to help them heal, and the next thing you know, they ruined it? I feel like the maid. I just cleaned up this mess. Can we keep it clean for, for 10 minutes? <laughs> they had to cut off his Thanos cast and make another one for him. Brenner got home and asked me to paint his new cast. No, I spent a lot of time painting that last one and you ruined it. How do I know you won't ruin it again? Come on, man, just paint it again. Why, why should I be penalized because of your sloppiness? So Brenner went around wearing a lame blue cast rather than a cool Thanos cast. A few months later, the doctors took off the cast and they realized that Brenner's arm had healed crooked. It was literally like a 15 degree angle. My mom pointed this out and the doctor said, Yeah, well, it's within the range of crookedness that we consider to be acceptable, so oh, we're just gonna leave it like that. <laughs> what? That's easy for you to say. You're not the one who has to live with a crooked arm. Fix his arm and do it right this time. So the doctors explained that in order to fix it, they would have to re-break Brenner's arm, angle it correctly, and recast it. Do it. Wait, what? Hold them down. Wait, no! <laughs> so they did that, and Brenner's arm eventually healed correctly, but not without pain. Now, you would think that after breaking his arm on Big Bertha, that Brenner would never touch that thing again, right? Nope. Let me tell you one last story. One day, me and Brenner got bored and decided to go for a ride. Him on Big Bertha and me on my go-kart. We chased each other around a parking lot, but then I thought, how can I make racing around more interesting? And my mind went to my favorite racing game, Mario Kart. You know, the game where you destroy your enemies by throwing items at them? So I decided to drive by Brenner and throw my flip-flops at him. We went back and forth throwing flip-flops at each other like green shells for some time. Then I zoomed by and got a good flip-flop strike on Brenner, and he wanted to retaliate with something stronger. He grabbed a big tree branch and drove towards me. He swung the branch and I swerved out of the way, but the branch was so heavy that swinging it threw Brenner off balance. He swerved and flew over the handlebars once more. Again? Freaking again? <laughs> Brenner was scraped and bruised, but luckily nothing broke. And he finally learned his lesson and he doesn't drive Big Bertha anymore, but I do. Here we are at the end of the video, and yet, that's not even all of Brenner's injuries. But if I keep talking about them, this video is going to be 30 minutes long, and at that time, he'll probably injure himself again. Let's quickly get through some last stories. Lightning round! We visited a janky aquarium that let you swim with sharks, and a bamboo shark bit Brenner's finger. Brenner went to a trampoline park, attempted a stupid trick, and landed on his head and had to wear a neck brace for a few weeks. Brenner and Brody went kayaking. Brody tried to splash Brenner with the paddle, but it skipped off the water, slammed into Brenner's face, and cracked his front teeth. A car almost backed over him as a child, but he hung onto the bumper while being dragged, and my sister stopped the car to save him. His friend accidentally shot him in the forehead with a BB gun, and his forehead still has a dent. In conclusion, Brenner's guardian angel is built different, because she has saved Brenner more times than I can count. And as much as I make fun of him, I am grateful for that. As he has grown, I think he has gotten a little less accident prone. Let's hope it keeps going in that direction, because I'm pretty sure he has used up all of his nine lives. God has sent his soul back to the living world so many times at this point that if Brenner shows up there again, God might just say, Oh, forget it, and keep him. Well, hey, it could be worse. At least his soul is going to heaven. Hey guys, it's me, your favorite Bryson. Thanks for watching. It's been a while, so let me make some announcements. I am a featured creator at VidCon this year, and I hope to see you there. I have a TikTok now, go check it out. We also started doing YouTube shorts. Thanks so much for the positive feedback on those. The first short I posted is now the most viewed video on the channel. 
Thanks a ton for that. We have two teams now. The goal is to be working on two videos at a time. The red team made this video. And guess what? Two more videos are in the works right now. I can't wait to show them to you. They're some of the best videos we've made. We have a Spanish language channel as well, so check that out if you speak Spanish. We also hit three million subscribers, Yahoo! I'm working on two super secret awesome projects right now that I'm real excited for. Stay tuned for that. Also, I turned 22 a while ago, so that's neat. I can't wait to see all the comments saying, Did his voice get deeper? Those are always fun. I can't wait for you guys to meet me in real life and realize that my normal speaking voice actually sounds like this. Okay, I love you, and wear your seatbelt. <laughs>